In this series, I will show you my hair transplant journey and how I went from this to this. My name is Dr. AJ and I'm a licensed medical doctor and a professional athlete. This is your go-to channel for science back walang etches na health and fitness tips and advice. As some of you may already know, around 10 months ago, I made a life-changing decision na magpa hair transplant. At that time, my androgenetic alopecia or male pattern baldness was already unbearable for me. Talagang bagsak ang self-confidence and self-esteem ko. And story time, a quick background on my hair loss story. I have been battling with male pattern baldness since I was in medical school. Doon ko unang napansin na parang nakakalbo ako. Initially, I tried to just embrace it. I even had my head shaved off. However, deep inside, di ko talaga gusto yung kalbo na look. Kahit may mga nagsasabi na bagay naman sa akin yung uh, skinhead. And in my attempt to slow down yung progression ng pagkakakalbo ko, for almost 10 years, I used two of the most well-studied and researched treatments, yung topical minoxidil and yung oral finasteride. Unfortunately, I wasn't consistent in application and taking kasi kailangan daily ito. So ayun na nga, fast forward 10 years later, lumala na ng lumala yung MPB ko. It was such a big insecurity that wearing a cap became my safety blanket. From playing my sport to going to the gym or kahit yung very basic na pumorma lang, I always needed to hide my hair or lack of it under a hat. And with that, I decided to finally consult about getting a hair transplant. I was really hoping I would be an eligible candidate kasi hindi siya para sa lahat. First, I consulted a very reputable clinic called Clinic de Paris in Makati. So ayun, they explained the procedure, ko ano yung gagawin, ano yung i-expect, at ano yung possible results. The doctors did an amazing job. They explained to me the procedure at ano ang realistic results na ma-achieve. Kaya naman, it was an easy decision for me to go through with the transplant. And so with that, on the 5th of October 2022, I went for my hair transplant. For the first part, the strands of donor hair were extracted sa likod na banda ng ulo at isa-isa itong hinarvest ng doctor. They harvested around 4,800 strands of hair and it took around 4 hours. Medyo nakakangawit lang kasi naka-prone position o nakadapa ako or face down all throughout the process pero it was bearable naman. Then after ma-extract yung mga hair strands, we took a lunch break in which they served a healthy lunch before going through the second half and more exciting part of the procedure, yung implantation. So each individual hair follicle was implanted again one by one. This time around, mas relax na yung position ko kasi nakahiga na tayo. And finally, after 10 long but really worth it hours, the procedure was finally done. Ayun lang, kailangan ng madaming benda sa ulo kasi kailangan i-cover yung mga wound. I was also sent home with antibiotics to help prevent infection, some pain medications, and a special shampoo and spray para sa aftercare. Pagka-uwi na pagka-uwi, ang major instruction sa akin is for the first three days, I needed to use yung special spray solution sa implanted area every 30 minutes while I'm awake or habang gising. Halos buong araw, spray lang ako ng spray to help the survival of the implanted hair. And by day 2, I was able to remove na yung gasa. And fortunately, medyo tuyo na yung donor area sa likod. Some clinics advise na pag natutulog, medyo naka-incline ang katawan at magsuot ng neck pillow. But in my case, gumamit lang ako ng protective padding or cloth sa pillow kaya okay lang na nakahiga. One thing that also occurred sa first three days is yung pamamanas ng muka which is expected naman because I had to take some steroids for the pain and inflammation. Luckily, nawala rin naman siya after a while. Day 4 onwards, pinayagan na akong maligo. Yes, yun nga lang, specific instruction sa akin na gentle lang ang paglinis dapat. Gamit yung special shampoo mula sa clinic, di ko muna pwedeng kuskusin yung scalp ko lalo na yung implanted sites. Instead, dampi-dampi lang. Dapat ang kailangan, iwasan tuklapin yung mga namuong sugat para hindi ma-dislodge yung mga follicles. 
Then back to regular activities na tayo from here on and pinayagan na rin akong makapag-workout at magbuhat ng mabigat after 2 weeks. By this time, tuyo na rin ang mga sugat and wala na rin yung pamamaga. From here on, waiting game na lang talaga ang pagtubo ng bagong buhok. Pero bibitinin ko muna kayo. Hanggang dito na lang muna and in our next videos, I will show you yung monthly progression ng hair transplant procedure ko. Do watch out for this video kasi papunta pa lang tayo sa exciting part. And if you have questions about hair loss, hair transplant, or anything about sa pagkakakalbo, comment nyo lang down below and discuss natin yan. Follow me on my social media. And if you enjoyed and learned a lot from this video, don't forget to hit like and subscribe and ring the bell for notifications so you won't miss out on health and fitness tips and videos. Once again, it's Dr. AJ. Stay safe, stay healthy, and see you on the next video.